Hey guys, John Conley here, UncleJohnSoap.com. So have you ever wondered what it'd be like to make soap without one of these? Stay tuned. Okay, so like I just alluded to, I've had some people from other countries, places where electricity is a little less available, people that are in small villages, things like that, whether they're there working or they live there permanently full time, whatever the case, that they just don't have access to electricity like we do. They may be able to get the equipment and things like that, but they just don't have the power to run it. Doesn't matter, you can still make soap. Look guys, there's probably a million ways to make soap out there. It's not a huge thing. You know, every one of us gets into it for a different reason. You know, whether it's what we want better ingredients, we want safer ingredients, we want just the fact that we like making our own stuff. You know, I went through a phase where I liked making my own furniture. Did I need to? No, but I liked knowing that I made that with my hands. I learned a new skill. And I'm also the type of person that likes to learn something new all the time. I don't, I don't want to sit stagnant and just take one bit of knowledge or the knowledge I learned in my first 25 years or whatever and just stay with that. I always want to learn new stuff. So that's why one of the reasons that I do it. I'm going to go ahead and get my oils together, tell you what they are, and kind of give you the next steps. Here we've got all of our oils. I'm getting ready to give you the recipe right here in a second. But this is coconut oil. Soybean oil, fully hydrogenated, so it's soy flakes. It's like the candle making soy, except no additives. And uh, canola oil. All things that are readily available for people in most of the world. The soy can be substituted with um, regular soybean oil, the liquid soybean oil. From everything I've tested so far, they, exact, they act exactly the same. So, you know. Be cautious about that. I may do another one with just liquid soybean oil and do a side by side and see what happens. But so far from what I've done, everything acts exactly the same. So here's the recipe, check that out. What you're going to do next is you're going to take your oils. For me, I'm going to nuke them. While that's nuking, let's talk. All right. So if you're living, and I hate to use this term, but if you're living in a third world country or you're off the grid and just, you know, kind of want to be Daniel Boone out in the American wilderness somewhere, Canadian wilderness, whatever, you know, you may not have electricity for the microwave, just like, you know, the people we're talking about with not having electricity for the hand mixer. I'm using it because I have it. And if I build a fire in my store, my landlord gets really upset. I may do another video at some point where I build a campfire outside and do it like that. I'm going to do this on the premise that it's basically a cold process soap recipe either way. If you are living somewhere where you have a small gas burner or you use open fires like, you know, a, a wood stove, a wood pit, whatever, to cook your food and things like that. Perfect for this, same deal. What I'm gonna tell you is take the pot, use something that is metal, heat resistant, not aluminum. Honestly, you can get away with using aluminum, but that's a whole flight that I don't wanna get into. So some kind of a steel pot, cast pot, if you use a cast pot, don't ever use it for food after that because they are porous. Stainless, you can actually wash it and get away with it. Um, using it back and forth, food to soap, it's fine. Plastic, you cannot use around fire, so not sure how you're going to do this. Some people will choose to mix their lye water and then dump that right in their oils to melt their oils. That works sometimes. For me, I've not had such good luck with it. So basically, heat up all your oils. You could even heat your oils in an aluminum pot and then pour into plastic to do your soaping. 
So there's a couple ways around it. Don't sweat it. Just think through it a little bit. You'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna mix our lye up. The oils are mostly liquid in there. So I usually wanna mix this. I like to soak my cold process if I'm mixing by hand a little hotter than normal. I don't know why. I'm not scientific about that part. It's just the way I like it. So I'm gonna mix this up now and the oils will be ready in a minute so that they're probably gonna be roughly the same temperature. I like to keep it between 100 and 120 degrees total for everything when I soak. You wanna use sodium hydroxide. I am not sponsored by this company. It just happens to be, I like the way it's packaged. It's easy for me to handle. It's easy to get shipped. Now this recipe calls for 23.6 ounces of water. I'm not gonna use that much. I always discount mine. So I'm over a pound already. I usually, for this size batch, use about 18 ounces. Nothing real drastic. It's funny, my standard batch calls for 8.5 ounces of lye. This one actually calls for nine ounces at a five, and this gives you a 5% super fat. So I'm gonna go with what the recipe calculator says. It's funny, they're all different. I could plug the same recipe into six different calculators and they're all gonna come out different, but I'm going to go with what they said. Let's be safe, you know? Nine ounces. And I pour it right into the water. Steady stream. I ain't dumping, dumping, but I'm not letting any grass grow under my feet here either. Nine ounces. And I just give that a quick mix. No gloves. I really don't like wearing long sleeves. Because if I get any on my arm, I want to be able to rinse it off and be able to put the shirt back on. <laughs> there are some fumes, just keep your face away from it. And you're sure all the crystals are pretty much dissolved. I keep a little piece of cardboard on the counter to set my whisk on. Because even on the laminated counter, if you set that whisk on there and let that lie sit on there, That'll eat that coloration right off the top of your laminate. So that's good, sitting there getting ready to go. So I don't want it to cool, but I don't want it to stay cloudy like this either. I want it to go mostly clear before I use it. Okay, oils are all liquid now. Lye water is just about ready to go. You can sort of see how it's getting more clear. Hopefully you can see it. It's not perfect. I don't think it ever goes, well, it will eventually go totally clear, but Again, no patience, and it's also no big deal. Regular whisk. I like a whisk, at least to get started. It doesn't matter. Use what you got. A whisk, a plastic spatula. Use a stick if you got one. I see so many people talking about having to go so gentle with your, your lye into your oils. It's not that big a deal, guys. We're, you know, people made soap for thousands of years, and... Here we are in the 2019, 2020, and we are making things so complicated. It's soap. You need it to get clean, make some, don't make it hard. All right, right now it is five minutes to one where I am. I need to write that down. You can see I didn't slosh it in there. in three minutes. Don't freak out. I'm only talking to my camera, not quite myself yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, guys. So it's been about 12 minutes for me. You can see the consistency here. Maybe a very light trace. 
I'll go a little bit longer, but honestly, I wouldn't be afraid to pour this now. We'll keep going. And don't be afraid to let it sit for a couple minutes. It's not going to hurt it just to sit. Okay. Been about 22 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Looking at the wrong part of the camera. All right. I'm going to show you what we got here. That's thick enough to pour right there. You can see, hopefully you can see little trails in it. That's fine right there. There's nothing wrong with that. And as you can see, I didn't stir the whole time. I, I didn't stir the whole time. I was, you know, stir for a couple minutes, walk away. Talk to customers. You probably heard some of them. I don't know how I'm going to edit this video yet, but we'll see. All right, time to pour. We're using a wooden block mold, loaf mold. I made this recipe to fit my mold. You'll have to do the math. I'll give you the percentages too when I put it on screen so that you can just change your percentages and ounces or grams back and forth. I'll try to give you all that. All right, put this on the paper towel. One last quick stir. I mean, it's plenty thick. That's about as traced as I want it. I will use a spatula to clean out the bowl because, eh, why waste it? You can use a box. You can use a orange juice carton. You can use whatever you want. Now, I will tell you, and I know I didn't talk much. I kept having customers in here, and I get self-conscious about talking to myself slash you guys when I have customers in the store. I don't know why. I do warn some of them. Some of my longtime customers, they get it. They don't, they don't mind. They don't get real freaked out about it or anything. Um, anyway, the temperature actually went up. Like right now, this oil is hotter than when I started. The, the reaction, the saponification, it will create its own heat. And you'll notice it when you touch the outside. Like even if you use a plastic paint bucket, something like that. Now, it's pretty liquidy right now compared to how I would normally pour it, but I like it because the bars will be flat. Ta -da! Now, go put some soapy water in that, let it soak for a little while, and when you come back, you'll be able to wash it fine. Or you can let it dry like this. Let it turn completely into soap, and when you go to wash it, it'll, it'll scrub right up. It'll suds up and everything. So, there you have it. Soap. Easy. Nothing complicated, guys. Don't overthink it. Just... Just kind of flow with it. You know, there's a few little things. Now, I will say there's a guy from the Peace Corps who emailed me. Uh, forgive me, I forget where he's from, uh, where he's staying right now. But he's in a village. Minimal electricity. You know, I guess he said enough to charge cell phones and maybe run a few lights at night, things like that. Um, so maybe a radio once in a while. Very minimal electricity. So, okay, you got to have fire for cooking. So you either got some kind of burner or a pit fire or a stove of some sort that you can put wood in and create your fire like that. Use your aluminum pots because he said that's pretty much the only pot where you can get is aluminum. So get the cheapest, most banged up aluminum pot you can get. Wash it out. Use that for melting your oils. Once the oils are melted, if you can get a plastic paint bucket or something similar or a bowl like I did. I mean, this makes 24 bars. This will last a while. But Pour everything into the, the paint bucket, all your oils. Then pour your lye water in and just mix away. Stick, spatula, whisk, whatever you got, man. Uh, if the pot's big enough and you got an old canoe paddle, use that. It's all good, man. Just make sure they're clean and make sure that most of the stuff you're using is just going to stay soap related after that. Just kind of dedicate it and leave it at that. I forgot to tell you, total time was 25 minutes from the time I got ready to combine the oils and the lye. 25 minutes into the mold. So just so you kind of have an idea. If it's hotter outside where you are, like right now in here, inside the shop, you know, moderate humidity, not, not uh, high at all. And I want to say it's about 62 degrees in here right now, 62 to 65 Fahrenheit. So if that gives you a comparison, if it's going to be 80 some degrees outside, get in the shade somewhere and make this because the extra heat from the sun beating on it will 
speed up your time probably, which could be a good thing. All right, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you've enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? Click like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything next time.